From Advisory Board, we're bringing you a radio advisory. My name is Rachel Woods. You can call me Ray. Nurses have played a vital role in responding to the COVID outbreak. Many have risked their personal safety, sometimes without adequate PPE, to care for patients. And at the same time, the majority of hospitals are seeing dramatically decreased volumes. And many nurses have been furloughed or had their hours cut. And yet, with everything that is going on in the world, it's also Nurses Week, a time when hospitals traditionally seek out, thank, and celebrate their nurses. This year's Nurses Week can't be the same as others. And to help us understand why, I brought my colleague, Carol Boston Fleischhauer. Hey, Carol. Hey, Ray. How you doing today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well. Managing, what is this, week six of being at home? For me, it's seven or eight. I've lost count. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do at Advisory Board. You know, I'm proud to say that first and foremost, I'm a registered nurse. I've got a lot of other degrees behind me, but I am a registered nurse. Always have been, always will be. Worked in a variety of roles over, gosh, almost 40 years now. But right now, I'm honored to serve as the Chief Nursing Officer of the Advisory Board. Carol, we're having you on this podcast because this is a very special week for nurses. Tell us what this week is all about. Well, May 6th is National Nurses Day, which is the start of Nurses Week. And it's an annual event for hospitals that, by the way, precedes Hospital Week, just so we, we, we are mindful of that. But because Florence Nightingale's 200th birthday is this year on May 12th, 2020, this particular year has also been designated by the World Health Organization as the Year of the Nurse and Midwife. American Nurses Association has also committed to the entire month of May to recognize nurses' unique contributions to health care. So bottom line, the year 2020 is a big deal for nursing. Wow. So I have to admit, it feels odd to be celebrating nurses in such a big way when we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? And many nurses are exhausted working on the front line. Others are furloughed and probably all of whom are struggling in some way. I'll tell you what, this is more than odd. This is raising a lot of questions that leaders have got to sort through very carefully. So for example, um, at a minimum, how does an organization even figure out how to extend gratitude and host celebratory events like gala award dinners or pancake breakfasts, right, in the wake of social distancing, where in certain sections of the country, we've got incredible surge care that's still happening as well. And yet, in other parts of the country, we've got a lot of nurses that aren't even working due to layoffs and cut shifts and furloughs. Now, I don't mean to be facetious here, but, you know, as a nurse, if I was in the midst of a surge, you know, still working. And I'm thinking of the pictures that we see in New Jersey and New York and Louisiana, you know, and some of the other places that have been hardest hit in this country. I might find myself thinking, forget about the ice cream social. Give me a clean mask, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And for those nurses who aren't even working, and there's a lot of those as well, these folks might feel like they've been forgotten, by their employers. Mm -hmm. So again, leadership teams are challenged to figure out what could be done and what should be done in recognition of all of the variables that COVID is presenting to us. And that's exactly where I want to go next. So how are organizations thinking about celebrating Nurses Week this year? What are you hearing? Well, you know, it's really interesting. Um, I've been surprised that a number of organizations either have or they are considering either canceling or at least deferring the formal means of recognition until sometime later on this summer, if not the fall. Hmm. But I'll tell you what, my take is don't cancel all of your mechanisms to recognize and thank in the moment. The optics of doing nothing would be disastrous, right? Even though 
whatever you do may have a very short shelf life for the recipients of whatever it is that you do. We are seeing a lot of organizations at least try to leverage virtual opportunities, take a look at, you know, partnering with various community agencies um, and local media, uh, doing something to get the word out even to the entire community so that your nursing staff, no matter where they are, at least feel some sense of recognition, no matter how busy the organization is at the moment. And I think this is a good moment to think about what should we be doing to recognize nurses, but also how do we actually make that happen? And we've been talking about this a little bit, but really there's kind of two different workforce scenarios we're seeing right now, right? The images we see online of nurses with bruises on their faces from being on the front line, but also their partners and their peers who are staying at home. I'm curious how can leaders actually go about addressing nurses who are in these two very different scenarios? You know, it's funny that you say that. We we really do have a tale of two workforces here. Every single nurse, though, is faced with challenges. This is our opportunity as leaders to respond in very deliberate ways, no matter where they are in the COVID um, continuum. So let's take the nurses in New York, New Jersey, right, as an example. Leaders in in that particular part of the country, I think, have got to recognize and prepare for PTSD hitting their workforce. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this old adage in healthcare, and it's called the I'm just fine culture, right, where clinicians, it could be nurses, it could be physicians, any provider, in the heat of the moment, pushes themselves to the limit, goes home, and then comes right back the next day to do it all over again. Well, I, you know, I really think that the I'm just fine attitude is going to catch up to these folks sooner or later. We're going to see burnout, impact on performance, potentially dropping out of the profession altogether, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got to figure out how to recognize that these folks are going to need just a little bit more than EAP, right, to help them down the road. We could benefit from learning from the military here, quite frankly. Yeah, I have to admit, on a completely personal level, I I really like the military reference as a former combat medic in the U.S. Army. There's a lot of me that is thinking about my peers and my friends and what they went through and how it feels to you know, march in a parade and get a flag handed to you, but how tricky it is when then you don't have a job or don't have access to healthcare. But as we said, that's only one of two scenarios we're seeing in the workforce. So what type of support do we offer to the nurses on the sidelines? Well, for the sideline nurse, I mean, put yourself in their shoes for a minute. There is definite uncertainty about whether or not employment is even going to resume here. Um, So many of nurses across the country have been, as I mentioned, you know, either asked to take decreased hours, if not leave, if not be furloughed for an indefinite period of time. Furthermore, you can presume that many of these folks also are dealing with the uncertainty of a shaky economic situation in their home. Maybe their husband or their wife, you know, lost his or her job. Maybe the kids are off school if they've got children. There might be a sick parent that's living in the home as well. Point is, we have got an entire workforce, I think, that right now is at serious risk. So, you know, can we as leaders use this moment as a catalyst to determine what needs to be done for nursing, not because of Nurses Week, but we're in the shadows of Nurses Week. And so what better moment to actually go beyond ice cream cones and trinkets to Try to figure out what a truly meaningful response that not only thanks and celebrates, but recognizes these folks for what they've done and what we're going to ask them to continue to do. We'll be right back with more radio advisory after this short break. Remember to subscribe to radio advisory on Apple podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. When you subscribe, you will get the latest episodes delivered to you as they become available. And if you like the podcast, leave a rating or a review. What actually would be a truly 
meaningful representation of, of Nurses Week in the midst of everything that's going on now? Well, you know, I think the nursing profession and nurses need leaders to recognize and respond to a few basic workforce needs. I'm talking physical safety as well as emotional recovery. Let's start with safety, right? That, that's the thing that's on everyone's mind right now. Well, you're right. PPE and testing is what obviously is top of mind for everybody. Um, but we've got to be real here in terms of supplies. And yet as leaders, we've also got to be clear here as to what our standard is going to be for all of our employees with respect to how to use the PPE that we have accessible to us. What are the types? You know, how often do we reuse the PPE that we've been allocated for various types of clinical areas? And with testing, you know, I'll tell you, as I talk with folks across the country, there's lots of variability here with respect to standards. And this is important because you're not talking about testing patients who might have COVID, which is, of course, important, but you're talking about testing the workforce, the staff, the nurses who are going to be interacting with patients and perhaps vulnerable themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, the question is, who is given the opportunity to be tested? What is the standard, you know, um, for an entire organization, which obviously has been a challenge from the very beginning because of the amount of supplies that organizations have. An honest moment, I can't think of a better way to recognize nurses than simply acknowledging the conditions they've been working in and doing everything in your power to fix it. That's right. We're talking about leadership commitment at a whole nother level here. So Carol, let's talk about the second thing that you mentioned, which is what leaders can do to support emotional recovery. You know, this is going to be tough. And let's just start with the challenges that this country has currently with our present mental health system. We've got to figure out a way to support the mental health of our employees way beyond EAP. The question that I know a lot of leaders are asking themselves is, what can we put in place right now? But also, what do we need to put in place for the long term? Because like you said, this isn't just about standard burnout practice anymore. You use the word, I think purposefully, PTSD to describe what a lot of nurses are going through. That's right. That's right. This is not just, I'm stressed. You know, this is folks that remember, remember that I'm not, I'm just fine culture that we talked about a few minutes ago. For a finite period of time, our clinicians are going to be able to hold it together but you can predict that you're going to see some downstream impact here with these folks. And so the question is, what do we do here to not only see where they're at at this point in time, right, but also be very purposeful in terms of the types of resources and support that these folks are going to need over the long term. Beyond stress reduction and mindfulness and educational materials, do you have hotlines? Do you have crisis support? Even spiritual care, by the way, which could be one of the most powerful weapons that an organization uses, but in a very different way. This is going to be a long-term need for a number of nurses down the road here for perhaps months at a time. Interesting fact here, I don't know if you know this, Ray, or not, but pre-COVID, one in four nurses demonstrated signs and symptoms of PTSD. That's pre-COVID, right? Hmm. So I can only imagine, right, if we evaluated where staff are now, what that data point would look like. And, you know, I think when we talk about emotional support, we've been largely talking about that image of the nurse on the front lines of a surge market. But as you keep reminding us, that is not the only type of workforce that we need to be focused on. So what kind of emotional support do we need to be offering to the other side of the workforce, the ones that have been largely on the sidelines. These folks' needs are as important, I think, as those folks that are in the trenches, but we need to recognize what their unique need actually is. Now, I think it's clarity regarding their future as an, um, 
employee within the organization. Now, I've got to say, I'm a little torn here about even raising this as part of this conversation about nurse recognition and support. Here we are talking about all the things that nurses need in order to come back to employment. Well, there's a portion of folks that unfortunately, I think, some tough decisions are going to have to be made regarding whether or not there will be employment opportunities down the road. And so it's almost it's like an entirely different conversation, but you can't not have it as you're talking about what's going on with the nursing profession. Mm-hmm. So, so let's say you're a leader that's having to deal with that double-edged sword. You know that labor costs have to be addressed as a way to keep your hospital or keep your medical group open. How do you actually suggest that leaders go about that extremely difficult conversation about cutting labor costs in the face of a pandemic? You know, every nurse right now is going to need honesty about what lies ahead in the organization. And this has got to come from the top. Leaders have got to commit to be as forthcoming, you know, with respect to the picture of what's going on in the organization and where you think the organization is going to land, let's say, three months, six months down the road as you possibly can. Of course, you know, most organizations are saying, boy, we want to commit to, you know, keeping our employees as whole as long as they possibly can. But an increasing number of organizations are going to turn to employees to be as flexible as they possibly can as well. Perhaps not being in a position to resume full-time employment or perhaps being asked to move around within the organization as the organizations start to open up in whatever trajectory that the organization experiences. Bottom line is we've got to make certain that employees if they come back to work, are going to be working with continued uncertainty in ways that they've never done before and for a length of time that really has no end point. So what I'm not suggesting here is that during Nurses Week, (laughs) you know, you start to think about outplacement support or job fairs, right, for your staff. But what I am saying is that we've also got to recognize that we've got a cadre of registered nurses who despite everything that they've done for the organization up until this point are personally uncertain as to whether or not they're going to have a future in the very organization that they have committed to. Carol, I appreciate you coming on the podcast so much. And before I let you go, I want to give you a chance to share a closing message. What do you want leaders across the healthcare industry to focus on during this Nurses Week? Well, thanks, Ray. I, I want to make certain that I'm not suggesting that an organization shouldn't do much for Nurses Week. You got to do the best you can to recognize your nursing staff this next week. Be as creative as you possibly can. By the way, I love ice cream. You know, I'm <laughs> sure that a lot of organizations can figure out how to deliver cones to the units and still respect social distancing, right? But honestly, I implore executives to use this moment of Nurses Week 2020 and everything that's gone on with respect to COVID, all the challenges that COVID has created for us to actually broaden our definition and our actions related to recognition. These folks deserve nothing less. Recognize and act on the considerable need for long-term emotional support for some, right? Universal need for safety for everyone, as well as the universal need for clarity and honesty about where the organization's business is going to go and what does that mean for employment in 2020. I think this is crisis leadership at its finest. Well, Carol, before I let you go, I wanted to sincerely thank you for your service as a nurse and for all of the support that you offer nurses and nurse leaders across the country. Is there anyone that you actually want to give a special shout out to this Nurses Week? Although healthcare as we know it has been changed rather dramatically, core character of nurses and nursing has remained resolute and constant throughout. So, I thank all of my colleagues. I wish you well and thank you for the opportunity and the honor to be of service to you. Thanks, Carol. 
Nurses are the largest workforce in healthcare. And as healthcare leaders, you can't afford missteps in terms of how you're supporting nurses through this crisis and beyond. So continue to thank, continue to recognize their service, but don't stop with celebration. You have to recognize the deeper challenges that the nursing community is facing and offer them a commitment at a deeper level. A work environment that is safe, a work environment that responds to the trauma that employees have, as well as honesty about what their future will be. And as always, we're here to help. Joe, how did how did that sound? It was clean. I think we got it. Uh, Carol, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Butter pecan. <laughs>